In today's rapidly changing technology landscape, machine learning and AI are enabling us to redefine industries and change the way we are even interacting with the world. Now, AI allows developers to create applications that are, of course, more intelligent, but also more flexible and more efficient. Now, ARM, due to its unique position in the industry, has been enabling AI across a variety of platforms for more than a decade. Now, in this video, I want to look at how ARM's technology allows developers to focus on innovation, to focus on the unique aspects of the app or the applications they are developing without worrying about how to implement the core technologies, reinventing the wheel every time because they can use the existing technology that ARM is already providing. In fact, there's been a recent release of ExecuTorch, which is a PyTorch native framework that allows you to deploy AI models on edge devices. And so I want to give you a demo of that running on a smartphone. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Now, before we continue, I'd like to thank ARM for sponsoring this video. Now, ARM's reach is extensive. There have been over 300 billion, billion ARM-based chips shipped globally. And 99% of all smartphones have an ARM-based chip inside of them. And even cloud services now offer, all of the major cloud services now offer ARM-based instances. So you can use ARM from microcontrollers to edge devices, all the way up to the cloud. Now, as going back as far as 2017, I've personally been making content about the advantages and disadvantages of different machine learning accelerators, NPUs as we might call them. Now they do have their place, but one myth is that you actually need an NPU to run machine learning or AI tasks. And that's simply not true. AI tasks can run on anything from a CPU to a GPU and to an NPU. And particularly with ARM's technology that you find in its ARM V8 and ARM V9 chips, you can run accelerated machine learning tasks very, very well on ARM CPUs. Now, matrix multiplication is the key mathematical operation at the heart of machine learning and AI. And of course, GPUs are good at matrix multiplication and so are MPUs. But also modern ARM CPUs are also good at matrix multiplication and they have hardware accelerators enabling matrix multiplication. So whether it's ARM VA or ARM V9, Cortex-A, Cortex-X and ARM's Neoverse processors all have different technologies that allow the acceleration of matrix multiplication operations. For example, there's ARM's NEON technology, there are scalable vector extensions available in ARM processors, and there are even 8-bit matrix by matrix multiplication instructions in the ARM instruction set. And now in smartphones and on edge devices, there are actual scalable matrix extensions available inside of ARM processors. Now, all of these technologies allow the CPU without a GPU, without an NPU, to do accelerated matrix operations. Now, Clyde is a central piece of ARM strategy to enable AI on ARM-based mobile and server platforms. It covers a range of resources and partnerships for helping developers accelerate AI seamlessly on ARM, including a library of high-performance machine learning kernels, Clyde AI, which have been optimized for ARM CPUs using those various hardware accelerators that we were just talking about. Now, Clyde is available on GitHub, and these kernels have been integrated into various frameworks ready for developers, you and I, all ready to use. As a result, we now have hardware acceleration for ARM CPU supporting a whole range of different machine learning technologies from classical machine learning all the way up to current and present generative AI. Now, ARM has integrated Clyde technology into popular AI frameworks such as PyTorch and, as I mentioned earlier now, ExecuTorch, resulting in significant out-of-the-box performance improvements for developers. This integration ensures that developers can leverage ARM's optimized libraries seamlessly within their existing workflows while gaining up to a 12x performance improvement with minimal effort. 
Now recently Meta, Facebook, announced Llama 3.2 and Arm has been partnering with uh, Meta to make sure that Llama 3.2 works perfectly on Arm CPUs. The availability of smaller LLMs that enable fundamental text-based generative AI workloads such as the 1 billion parameter version and the 3 billion parameter version are critical for enabling AI inference at scale. ARM CPUs can run larger modules as well such as Llama 3.2 11 billion parameters and even the 90 billion parameters one of course up in the cloud. The 11 billion and 90 billion models are a great fit for CPU based inference workloads in the cloud that generate both text and images. The 11 billion parameter version of Llama 3.2 running on an Amazon AWS Graviton 4 processor can achieve 29.3 tokens per second during the generation phase and that's just on the CPU. Thanks to the collaboration between ARM and Meta on the ExecuTorch framework you can now access optimum performance by running those models on the edge. Running the new Llama 3.23 billion LLM on an ARM powered smartphone through the ARM CPU optimizations leads to a five times improvement in prompt processing, a three times improvement in token generation, achieving 19.92 tokens per second during the generation phase. Okay, so earlier on I promised you a demo. Let's have a look. Okay, so here is the app. So it's fully open source. It's a demo project. Uh, links in the description below. You can build it all yourself. Use running Llama 3.2. Uh, and then uh, it's been quantized. Now this is all running on the CPU. Now I've typed in a, what's the best toppings for pizza? And now it's gonna give us the answer. Now first of all, look at the speed of that. This is coming on the smartphone, okay? And it's not using an MPU, it's not using a GPU. That's all just coming out from the CPU. Now that is pretty impressive. So as I said, Llama 3.2, it's been quantized and all the instructions on how you can do this are there on that uh, page from Arm. But have to tell me five things to do in London. Again, the speed of the reply is what we're looking at here. This really is quite amazing. It's all running in the phone. Nothing's going up to the cloud. Nothing's talking to any big servers. It's all just running on my smartphone. And of course, because it is the full Llama 3.2, uh, it can do programming as well. So write a Python uh, program. You'll have to excuse my typing here, I'm just using the, the corrections there to do it as quick as I can, that finds the first 100 primes. That's what I want to do. So can this LLM write uh, Python code? Of course it can, because it's the standard uh, LLM, but it's running here on your uh, phone. Now, of course, the possibilities now for developers are absolutely enormous. Think of all the things that you could do with a large language model running on the phone, not up in the cloud, just using the ARM CPU inside of the phone. No GPU, no NPU, just the CPU. Now ARM's approach is performance portability, which means that AI developers can optimize once and then deploy their models across a whole variety of different platforms without having to make any modifications. This is particularly useful for developers who need to be able to deploy models both on the edge in a smartphone and also in the cloud. By using ARM, developers can be sure that their model once optimized for one platform, it will also perform well on other platforms. Now, ARM has some great resources for developers, including documentation on how to accelerate generative AI and ML workloads when you choose to run them on ARM CPUs, plus how to run AI and ML on device with Android. And I'll leave a link to those resources in the description. Okay, that's it. So that's my look at how ARM technology is allowing developers to deploy ARM across a whole variety of different platforms from smartphones right up to the cloud with that kind of guarantee that if it works well in one place, it will also perform well in other places. Love to hear your thoughts about this in the comments below. Do let me know what you think. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explained. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, why not stick around, subscribe to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.